What's up everyone, Cloaking Donkey here, and we are here today to talk about Camelot Unchained. Now, I've already made a video where I basically explained what Camelot Unchained is, the what is Camelot Unchained and why should I care video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out because that is pretty much the sort of simplest summary of the game that I can give you. But I try to explain the entire game in 15 minutes and that's difficult because there is a lot to this game. There are a lot of different things. And so I want to make sure that in this series, I go a bit more into detail on all of the systems because I still think that it is really difficult to inform yourself about Camelot Unchained. I mean, the info is out there, but because of how many streams and Q and A's and developer blogs and all that sort of thing, City State Entertainment has done over the years, it's just very scattered. It's out there, but it's really difficult to just get an overview quickly. So, this series of videos. I'm gonna go through all of the major systems of the game. So, PvP, combat, abilities, crafting, housing, everyday gameplay, meta, and all of those sorts of things to give you an overview of what you can expect when this game goes into beta and then eventually into its live version. And we're gonna start today with combat because, let's face it, in a PvP game, or an RVR game, if you will, combat is a lot of what you do. I mean, most of the time you're going to be fighting the enemy realms, and that involves combat. So if the combat isn't good, or is boring, or laborious, or awkward, then that is always going to reflect on your gameplay experience. I think that is probably one of the things that made Warhammer Online less of a good game in a lot of people's opinion, because the combat was just that little bit too clunky. I personally still liked it, but if you compare it to World of Warcraft, for example, there's just no comparison. The combat is just so much more fluid in World of Warcraft. And on the other hand, in my comment sections for all of my Camelot and Chain videos, one of the most asked questions is probably, is this action combat or is this tap targeting combat? And I'm sorry that my answer is so incredibly pretentious, but it's sort of neither and sort of both at the same time. So let's start at the beginning. I'm gonna have a separate video for abilities, but for now let's just say abilities aren't like they are in other tap targeting games, but instead your character gains components for abilities and you build your abilities yourself. For the sake of this video, let's just assume that abilities consist out of three components. An effect, a delivery method, and bonuses. So for example, on a fireball, fire damage would be the effect, the ball flying projectile thing would be the delivery method, and then any sort of like, after hitting, it leaves a dot that burns for a while or has a knockback, any some such stuff would be the bonus effects. By default, pretty much every ability in the game has to be aimed in some way. So specifically, projectile abilities have to be aimed at targets. You're not just tap targeting, hitting your button and the thing happens. You have to manually aim. And the projectile will fly and there will be drop to it as well. So it's not as easy as just hitting a button. So in that way, it's not a tap targeting system. However, tap targeting definitely still exists for direct spells. So anything that would be a direct spell effect. The fireball could, for example, instead of the ball, also have the delivery method of just hit the target. And so the enemy would just take fire damage instantly without there being a projectile. And this would of course also change the characteristics. Obviously, if you could just swap that out, nobody would want to use the projectile. So having a delivery method like that would probably affect the damage negatively or would add a cooldown to the spell, something like that. But in general, most abilities are going to be aimed. And then through the modification system, you can add additional things to the spell. And there will also be effects like homing, so that a projectile that you fire homes toward the target and sort of gives you, let's say, an aim assist. But like everything else in the game, this won't just be free, there will be an additional resource cost attached, or it will reduce the damage that it deals, or increase the cooldown, anything like that, just like with the different delivery method. And that's why I said it's kind of both at the same time. You do have to aim pretty much most abilities, but if they are abilities that you just need to hit every time you hit that button, you can add modifications to get rid of the aiming process. 
but it is always going to come at a cost and it will be the job of balancing teams to make sure that both options are viable and that neither one of them is the only choice to make. Now with everything being aimed, it does sound a lot like action combat, right? But I think one of the most important parts of action combat is the dodge roll. Pretty much every game that tries to go in some kind of action combat direction, or even just games like Guild Wars 2 that basically are still tap targeting games, but kind of add this action element, or at least uh, make you believe they are action combat games, they always add the dodge roll, because that sort of gives you the impression that you are a lot more mobile. Camelot Unchained, not going to have a dodge roll for every class. There might be some classes, you know, classes like Stealthers, for example, that may have something like a dodge roll, but then that would just be a normal ability for that class, and not just something that every character has. And with that and with that bit of mobility out of the way, it's just never going to feel like an action combat game because the frantic jumping around and rolling around like an idiot is just kind of going to fall away a little bit. Now the next important part to the combat system is that all of the projectiles in the game, everything that in some way flies through the air, be it an arrow or a fireball or a boulder thrown by a catapult, or even when the Dullahan throws his severed head at people, all of those things are going to be physical projectiles in the game. And this is a very important point, because with a lot of tap targeting systems, for example Guild Wars 2, there really aren't any projectiles. You choose a target, you click your spell, and you see an animation of a projectile flying through the air, but it's really just an animation and in reality there is a algorithm behind the scenes that basically just calculates your distance to the target and just adds a delay to the damage that's going to happen. So when you hit your fireball ability for example and you are let's say 20 feet from the target the game will say alright he's 20 feet from the target and that fireball is going to hit after let's say 1.67 seconds and so you cast your spell and then 1.67 seconds later it impacts the target and does damage. There was however no actual projectile. The projectile that's flying is just an animation and could just as well be, I don't know, something rolling over the floor or something falling down from the sky and hitting him 1.67 seconds later. And in Camelot Unchained, that is not the case. In Camelot Unchained, everything is an actual object flying through the air, which at the same time means that characters can block these projectiles. So far there is no friendly fire, however I'm not entirely sure right now because it's been a while since I asked that question, <laughs> I gotta be honest I don't even remember the answer. I will ask it in the next Q&A and then put an annotation right here. I am not currently sure if that means friendly characters block friendly harmful projectiles. They're not going to take damage of course because as I said, there's no friendly fire, but does your friendly heavy fighter still block your fireball when you throw it at the guy he's fighting and he happens to step in the way? Personally, I really hope that's not the case because that would definitely be a hard nerf to melee characters because then you will just not want to have melees in the front. Or alternatively, if melees do very well, it's going to be a nerf to ranged characters. Now what this however means is that if you are a tank, for example, you're a heavy fighter and you chose to go with a shield and a lot of health and armor and brrr, you're just that frontline guy, you get to physically block projectiles that are meant for your friends. So if that enemy mage is throwing a fireball at your healer, you can run between them and hold up your shield and the fireball will impact your shield. And that is what really sets the combat in Camelot Unchained apart from so many other games. Because even in a lot of action games, that is not necessarily the case. And then we haven't even yet talked about the air system. I'm going to have a separate video for the air system because there is so much to talk about. Currently it is planned to have a system in the game where pretty much everything you do in the world can have some crazy chaotic consequence. Not necessarily random, but random in the sense of chaotic. So for example, 
if you fire a fireball and the warrior deflects it with the shield and it impacts a barrel of pitch and that blows up and burning pitch is flying everywhere and a bunch of it splashes onto the healer who is then set on fire and he runs around panicked and sets a house on fire and the house collapses and crushes everyone within it. A bit of a crass example maybe, but that's the sort of thing that they want to do. Now if that's really going to make it into the game, I have no idea. It sounds really complicated, but if they do manage to do that, it'll be a really, really cool thing. Now the last thing I want to give you to understand though, is that this combat in Camelot Unchained is not going to be hyper speed, super fast, action combat. That's why I said it's not really action combat. It's going to have a lot of the fittings and features of action combat systems in general, but it is not going to be anywhere near the speed of these games. If you think, for example, of a game like Terra, incredibly fast action combat, that is not going to be Camelot Unchained. Camelot Unchained is going to be a bit more methodical, more strategical, more tactical. There's going to be less spamming of buttons and rah, 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 rah. In that regard, it's going to be more like the tap targeting games of old, but simply in terms of the speed and not in terms of any of the other things that come with those systems. That is why I had to give you that pretentious answer in the beginning, because it really doesn't fit exactly one or the other. And if they manage to do everything they want to do, it will kind of be its own thing. All right, guys, and that is everything I have to say about the combat in Camelot Unchained as we currently understand it. Of course, these things can change in the future. I don't know where it's going to end up a year from now. We'll just have to wait and see what the beta does, which should happen sometime soon. In the next part, I'm going to be talking about the abilities, and that should happen relatively soon. But until then, I've been the Cloaking Donkey, and I'll see you in another video!